Hello, this is Professor Wang Lingfa from the program in Emerging Infectious Disease at Duke and Yates. In the next 10 minutes or so, I will give you a short presentation on the current ongoing Wuhan coronavirus outbreak. Here are the topics I will cover. I will start from what is the coronavirus and other examples of deadly human infections with coronaviruses and the timeline of the current outbreak and then how much do we know about this new virus and the origin and transmission of the virus. And I end up with the symptoms and the prevention measures. Viruses are divided into families. Coronavirus is a family of viruses that are mostly infect animals, but sometimes they can be transmit to human and cause disease. The symptoms usually involve fever, you know, difficulty in breathing, coughing, and a runny nose. The elderly and the young are most susceptible. There are currently seven coronaviruses known to infect humans. OC43229E are considered old ones that have been associated with us for a long time. 2002, 2003, we discovered the SARS coronavirus, and after that, we discovered the NL63, HKU1, and the MERS coronavirus. And then this new 2019 novel coronavirus, which is responsible for the current outbreak. In the last 20 years, there have been two major zoonotic transmission coronavirus from animals to humans and caused significant deaths. In 2012, Middle East, the most coronavirus was detected, and up to now, there have been 282 fatal cases. And bats are believed to be the natural reservoir, and camels are the second reservoir, which is important for transmission to humans. The symptoms are similar to other respiratory virus. And the virus obviously is able to human to human transmission. Currently, there's no vaccine or treatable treatment available for most. And uh, really, medical care is the only support really can be had. And then in 2002, 2003, there was the severe acute respiratory syndrome virus or SARS that spread very rapidly and eventually caused the infection of more than 8,000 people with 774 deaths. And bats, again, the host of bats are believed to be the natural reservoir, and the intermediate host is a civic cat, so it's a wildlife animal uh, traded in China. And the symptoms are flu-like as well, and there are human-to-human -human transmissions. Again, no vaccine is available for the time being. Here are the key events. December 31st, Last year, 2019, WHO alerted the world on this pneumonia-like outbreak in Wuhan. 1st of January, China CDC says that in the early cluster of patients, 80% of them are associated with a seafood market, and that seafood market actually also trades animal sort of products, live animals, like rats and raccoons. 9th of January, that's an important date because the WHO basically announced that the outbreak is most likely caused by a previously unknown coronavirus. Then 11th of January, first death was reported in China. And the imported cases start to be uh, reported first in Thailand on 13th January, and then Japan on 16th. And by 21st of January, US got its imported cases. 21st January is also important because uh, on that day, the China Ministry of Health announced that with the cluster of infection happening in the hospital and confirmed that the virus is capable of human-to-human -human transmission. In Singapore, 22nd of January, MOH advised people to avoid non-essential travel to Wuhan. The other important event happened is the Wuhan government basically quarantined the whole city of 11 million people. This is unprecedented really in the human history. 23 of January, WHO organized its first emergency meeting, but decided not to declare a public health emergency based on limited transmission outside of China. 23rd of January, Singapore confirms the first case of Wuhan virus, and today we already have 10 confirmed cases. Last event which is important is 24th of January, is the first whole genome sequence of this new coronavirus went online. This great facilitate development diagnostic vaccines and all associated measures essential for the outbreak response and the prevention of future outbreaks.
Although that it's only like two months into the outbreak, we actually know quite a lot about this new virus. It's related to SARS, but the, the fatality rate is lower. The case fatality rate for SARS is 10%, MERS is 35 And for this new coronavirus, I think that it's uh, only an estimate around 2%. More accurate number will come with more cases confirmed. But the virus is not the same as SARS. It's related. So there's around 20 to 25% genetic difference from the SARS coronavirus. And uh, we don't know whether this virus first emerged in human or has emerged and caused maybe mild disease or small cluster in the past. And uh, there's currently no vaccine. So that uh, the international scientific community is working around the clock to really try to develop vaccine as soon as possible. And using SARS as an example, which is always dangerous, you know, no virus are the same, but because it's SARS-related and the symptom is similar, so most patients for SARS, most patients uh, will eventually fully recover uh, without any long-term complications. There's a lot of media attention on which where this virus is from, and uh, fortunately, I have the opportunity to work with lots of zoonotic uh, virus funding in bats. So I can say the virus is similar to other coronavirus found in bats, so that suggesting that there's not a link. And then for many of the bat bone viruses, they actually need an intermediate host, you know. So for example, hendra virus in Australia is back to host the human transmission. Nipple virus in Malaysia is back to pick the human transmission. And the coronavirus in China is back to civic to human translation. And most, as we say, we believe it's a bat virus, but it's already establishing in camel and that transmits to human. This new coronavirus, again, we believe back as a natural reservoir, but the transmitting animal, I call the animal X here, is unknown. And we believe animal X is most likely a mammal. So the, you know, discussion on the web about snake as an intermediate host, I think the likelihood is small. And the human to human transmission, I said, can occur. And then some infected Individuals may be more infected than others due to, you know, the individual's difference in their host immune response and the physiology. As I mentioned in the previous slides, you know, the symptoms are very similar to flu, right? You have fever and difficulty in breathing, coughing, and runny nose. And the disease may last up to, you know, 14 days, uh, with symptoms appearing around four to seven days after exposure to the virus. This is called an incubation period, but it can range from 2 to 17 days, so, so we really have to be careful there. And for individuals with weak immune system, it may cause serious disease such as pneumonia and bronchitis. And the Singapore Minister of Health have the foreign guidelines, you know, for precautionary measures. First is to avoid close contact with people who are already under well or showing symptoms of illness. And then avoid contact with live animals. And that's very sort of obvious. Observe personal hygiene. And uh, I think that most people are doing this already, like washing hands, you know, with soap, you know, after toilet, before food. It's just that during the outbreak season, you just need to do that much more stringently than normal. And then if you're unaware, you know, any symptoms of uh, cough or runny nose, you should wear a mask. You know, this is, is really the responsibility of every citizen to prevent the further spread of this virus. And then cover your mouth if you're going to sneeze or things like that, you know, and then dispose this soil tissue immediately and safely. Lastly, if you're unlucky and is having developed fever or runny nose, don't panic because the chance of getting this virus is still very, very small in Singapore. So my advice is seek medical attention. But it's best maybe by calling in first before you just go to the emergency department because this place may be overwhelmed and maybe you have more chance to actually get infected with other viral diseases. Okay, so with that, I'd like to thank you for your attention and watch the space. We may come back with updates in the near future. Thank you.